Righto folks, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to install uh, Arc Ascendant mods as well as how to update your configuration. So if we head over to Curse Forges, Arc Survival Ascendant mods page here, we can see whatever mods that we can install. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to head over into Popular Mods, let's view all of them. And then I'm looking for the Cryopods mod, it should be one of the first ones. Alright, Cryopods. So we'll click on that guy here, and cool. So to get mods, what we need to do is get this project ID. So there's this project ID on the right. Let's just copy and paste this down or keep this page open here for a second. Secondly, uh, let's open up our Arc Survival Ascendant Start uh, executable. And here, we'll open it up. I already have it open here. And now we need to add uh, an additional argument here at the end. So after the no battle I, we'll do a hyphen and then mods, well, if I can type, mods is equal to the string so set of quotes and then let's go back to that page copy the project id and then we'll paste that into our mod section here okay that's step one we'll save this um, just to in case you don't have this uh, batch file already created uh, take a look at my previous video and you'll be able to put this together on how to get an arc server set up using steam cmd cool so once we have this mod set up here, let's head into our Arc Ascendant directory. This is wherever our server is actually created. Then from here, let's head into Shooter Game, Saved, Config, Windows Server, and we should have one file here, which is our game user settings.ini. Let's right click it and open it with a text editor. In this case, I'm gonna be using uh, Notepad++. Okay, so let's take a look here and see what all settings that we can mess with. So if we want to show our locations on our uh, show player locations on our map, we can do that. Allow third person, allow a crosshair. If we want to update our server password or admin passwords, we can do that as well. Let's not worry about our ports. The max structure and range, uh, this is the amount of structures and the amount of uh, polygons or pixels or not pixels, vertices that it can use. Um, it's worth kind of Googling these a little bit just to see which values work best for you. Uh, start time is the start time of our server. We'll be starting it at negative one or just zero or at the beginning. Then from here, uh, ox oxygen swim speed stat multiplier. So if we want to uh, swim faster and use less oxygen, we can adjust that. Uh, st structures prevention resource multiplier. So if we essentially want to uh, build structures and then we don't want the resources to regenerate, uh, we can adjust this to be a little bit lower. Um, so if we want resources to be closer to our base, we can put this lower. Uh, if we want it to be further away, we can set it up to like two or something like that. I'll set it back to one. So that is um, for the resources spawning how close to your base or not. The cooldown for how often you can change your tribe name, uh, the, the size or bounds you can build your platform on a, a saddle. So if you have a platform saddle, this is the area or the bounds multiplier. So if you want it to be bigger, we can set it to two or smaller, we can set it smaller. If we want to allow structures pick up, we set that to true. Um, additionally, if we want some type of cooldown after the structure has been placed, we have 30 seconds to set that. So if we want to make it longer, up to 60 seconds, we can do that. Shorter, 15 seconds. So let's set that back to, back to 30. Personally, I like it a little bit longer. Um, additionally, whenever you pick up an item, you'll have to pick it up for a certain amount of time. So we can set this to half a second, or if we want to set, set it to a full second or two seconds. Personally, I like it a little bit longer just, in, just so I don't mess it up. So we'll set it back to one. For some people that like to pick up structures quicker, um, they might set it to 0 0.1 or something along those lines. I'll just set it to one. Okay, uh, our next bit is hide or allow uh, high damage from source from logs. From this, uh, essentially whenever damage happens on your server, if you want it to be added to your log server, to your log file, we can set this to false. Let's keep this to true because it adds a bunch of, a bunch of junk we don't need. Uh, rate dino food drain multiplier. That's gonna be our dino dr uh, food drain multiplier. So we can adjust that as we need, need be. Uh, PVE dino decay, uh, that is as dinos decay and uh, in the real world and get killed, how long is that gonna take? We can adjust that here. Idle kick period. So uh, after a player has been idle for uh, 3,600 seconds, they'll be kicked. So we can adjust that. Uh, we can adjust our, our auto save period. We can also adjust uh, how many structures we can have on top of a, a platform or a platform saddle. Typically I like this a bit higher, so I'm just gonna set this to two or maybe even five. 
Okay. Uh, we already talked about autosave, max tame dinos. This is the amount of tame dinos you can have on the map. That, that can be adjusted. Item stack size, this is essentially, so let's say you have something that can only be one item. So let's say prime meat, for example, I believe is a stack size of one. So if you adjust this to let's say 32, everything that is only one stack size will now be 32 and so on. So anything that you can have bigger stacks of will be bumped up to 32 times. So we'll set that to one. Archon server game buffer log, let's not worry about that. Let's not worry about this uh, implant suicide uh, item either. And then let's, uh, and if we want to allow hit markers, we can do that as well. Some additional settings we want, might want to add here. Um, actually, before we even talk about that, let's go through the rest of the file. So we have these scale scalability items. Um, this is really just kind of some post-processing and texture performance uh, things. I don't really mess with these, but if you're more, if you want to, feel free. Um, you might get some performance things, but it, more often than not, you're probably going to have some issues if you start messing around with these. Um, in addition, if we want to start um, adjusting some user settings, so on the user side, we can adjust the essentially master audio, um, allow third person players, as well as some additional settings such as like motion blur, film grain, uh, clusters, inversions, chat bubbles. Um, just take a look through these. There's a bunch of settings here. Um, but Typically, whenever you're hosting a server, there's a couple other settings that you'll want to add. So in the description below, I've added some additional some additional configurations we can add here. So copy and paste those right below our allow hit markers. Cool. So let's get rid of this first section here. We'll talk about mods in a section in a second. But if we want to adjust our harvest rate and our multiplier for our harvest rate, so if we want to harvest more, we can up that up to like five or two. Uh, we'll keep that as, as one. Um, additionally, for how much health what we're harvesting has, we can adjust that as well. So how long we can harvest. Uh, our, damage, our, dan our dino damage multiplier, I for some reason have this uh, copied here three times. Let's get rid of that. So our dino damage multiplier, we can adjust how much damage we put out. And then our structure resistance multiplier, so how how much damage our structures can take, then our difficulty offsets and our override official difficulties. So this is how we're going to adjust where our dinos will spawn, or what levels our dinos will spawn. So uh, essentially this value, uh, difficulty offset goes from zero to one all the way up to one. So if we can set that to one, we'll get the highest difficulty offset. We have an additional multiplier. So. From here, uh, with our additional multiplier offset, we can multiply it times five. It's just worth nothing with it, messing with these values. The Netrato server configuration page kind of talks about it a little bit. I'll link it down in the description so you can kind of get an idea of what these do. Okay, so we added our server settings. Then let's, uh, I'm gonna adjust this back to 0 0.1 so we have our regular vanilla difficulty or lower difficulty. Then if we wanna set server PVE, we can do that. All right, so back to mods. Let's do that here real quick. We know what mods we wanna do. We have to add one more thing here. So let's add in active mods. We'll set that equal to uh, essentially whatever our mod ID is. I'm gonna copy and paste this here and we'll paste that in. It's also worth saying if you want to install additional mods or anything along those lines, let's add in a comma and you'll essentially just put in the other mod ID. The same thing goes with our Arc Survival Ascendant batch file. So we have these mods here. We'll put in a comma and then we'll put in whatever other mod ID we want to use here. But for the time being, we're just using one. So we'll save that. We'll save this guy here. We'll get rid of any additional spaces. We don't need to worry about that too much. But assuming that all goes well, we'll head back into our uh, Arc server. Too many files open here. And then we'll start it. It's also worth mentioning, uh, whenever we install uh, mods here, it will take a little bit longer to get them started. So your Arc, your Arc server will take a little bit longer. While this is starting, it's also worth mentioning that uh, in some cases, uh, whenever we update our Arc uh, Survival Ascendant server, uh, this game server settings file might get overwritten. So it's a good idea to typically go into our configuration and just back it up. So I'm gonna copy this, our, our game server, our game user settings, and then we'll paste that essentially back in the directory of our batch files, just so we have a backup. 
I'm just gonna call that backup just so we have it and cool. And let's wait for Arc to start here. Righto, so once our Arc server started here, we'll head over to unofficial. We'll search for our server. I named it my Arc server in this case. And it should come up for us. We can see on the right with mods, yes. So whenever we click on that, we'll see that our actual mods are required here. So whenever we join, it should install them for us. It's also worth noting that if you don't see your ARC server listed, it's worth going back into your batch files and updating the server, and then putting your updated game user configuration back into there. But assuming that all runs well, cool. Our ARC server should now be running, and let's just double check that cryopods are here. And obviously I'm only level one, but if I search for cryo, we can see the outlines for cryopods. So cool, looks like it all worked right. And even if we hit escape here, we can see that our mods running and our server ping. So we're running on a server with mods. So hope you I hope you enjoyed. Hope that helps. Have a good one.